Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. We've got a lot to talk to you about this week. Uh, from uh, Harambe Nights at Animal Kingdom to the new co-op marketplace at Downtown Disney. Uh, plus, Disney has announced they're doing their Villains Unleashed party again this year. We're going to talk about that. Port Orleans is going to be a test bed to see if people can bypass check-in altogether before they get to their rooms. And the construction walls have come down at Diagon Alley at Universal Orlando. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, also, uh, Disney artist Kevin John is here in the studio with us. We're going to talk to him. And a little later on, we're going to talk about the latest rumors swirling around the Disney universe. All that coming up next. From the Bob Barley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 711, for the week of June 9th, 2014. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Barley Studio in Orlando, Florida, I'm your host, Pete Warner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, Kathy Whirling, <laughs> Teresa Eccles, Disney artist Kevin John, Corey Martin, and back in the production nook, our producer, Dustin West, along with associate producers Craig Williams and Sean Thompson, and the newest member of our team, our new intern, Sean Michael Noah. Say hi, Sean. Hi, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how, how positively Burns and Gracie have you. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. We have got so much to talk about uh, this week. I'm, I don't know why I'm just like very excited about today's show. Yes. Um, I'm usually excited about the show anyway, but I'm just particularly excited today. I don't know why. Maybe I'm in a good mood. I've gotten some sleep. I've gotten some rest. Had a very restful weekend. So, But uh, first up, I uh, just want to remind everybody, we are going to be at the Hershey, Pennsylvania Diz Me to raise money for Give Kids the World this weekend. We'll be doing a show from there. We're really looking forward to that. Never been to Hershey Park. Never been to... Never been to Pennsylvania? I've been to Pennsylvania. <clears throat> okay. I grew up in Jersey, for God's sakes. Okay. So, but uh, excited about that. But uh, <clears throat> really looking forward as well to the next Diz Meet coming up after that in Nova Scotia. Uh, now, I did uh, speak to Evelyn uh, yesterday, and uh, Evelyn McNamara, who is, of course, one of the coordinators of, uh, of that meet. And uh, they're already up, up to about 80 people signed wow. up for it. They've got slots for 200, though. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what it is they're going to be uh, doing at that meet. Um, I, I, we've really been encouraging people from the states, our districts from the states, to head up and show their support. And uh, don't look at this just as a Diz meet and a good opportunity to help raise money for, uh, for Give Kids the World. Um, this is... Uh, I mean, this is a vacation. I mean, they've got such a great weekend planned. Mm -hmm. They've got, you know, got lunch at a vineyard, uh, planned chicken burger. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, if you yes. haven't uh, experienced chicken burger, <clears throat> yep, you don't know go. what you're missing. Um, we've got the Sunset Pirate Cruise. Oh, our, our, can't out wait of, for that. That was so much fun Halifax. last year. Um, and I'm trying to bring it up They're here. going to Blomidon again where we had the, the picnic out. Oh, the, that's the where we fell in the mud. And you got stung. In the mud and I got, oh, that was a good mm -hmm. time. My foot swelled up huge. But it was fun. Yes, it was. Beautiful countryside. I mean, they've got so much planned for for this weekend um, that it's... And, and I can't stress enough how absolutely gorgeous Nova Scotia is, mm -hmm. especially Halifax. What a great city. We just loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, and I got to be honest. Last year was my first year going up there. I'd never been before, and I, I was really surprised by how much I responded to Halifax. You guys had told me, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why you know after yeah. these guys went a few years ago and came back and talked about it, and I'm like, okay, that that sounds like it might be cool. And if nothing else, go show support, right? And I know that we have some dizzers uh, coming up to Nova Scotia mm -hmm. for this, but. Um, this could be really cool. And, and uh, honestly, the airfares I'm seeing are really reasonable, uh, especially if you're flying out of the Northeast. Um, 
you know, you're going to connect through JFK. There's, I don't think there are any direct flights into to Halifax. Hopefully we'll have a shorter commute this time. Yeah. Yes. Last year yes. was like a 20-hour. <laughs> well, I already booked my flight. My flight's already booked. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know what the rest of you tell but oh my! No, we'll get to you guys. Layover in LA. I just I needed to get, <laughs> I needed to get my I needed to get my travel schedule for the rest of the yeah. year kind of just nailed down. I spent a lot of time doing that this weekend. I was obsessing about my travel schedule, but um, really really excited about about Nova Scotia. And so I'm encouraging everybody, please, if you can, think about it. What a nice nice long weekend, nice long weekend getaway. It, great people, beautiful place to be. Uh, especially if you're in the warmer parts of the U.S., like we are, um, the, the 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 weather up there is just gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like spring, and uh, so August is a perfect time to be in Nova Scotia. So uh, we'll have a link in the show notes page, uh, disunplug.com, where you can find all the details about uh, the meet. It is going to be uh, August. Seventh, eighth, seventh, somewhere yeah. I think it's the like weekend that. of August seventh yeah. or August eighth, whatever that Friday, Saturday, Sunday is. Um, yeah. But that first weekend in August is is when this is going to be. So please check it out if you can join us. We'd love to have you. Second weekend is the second weekend. Yeah, because the first one is like the the first. Yeah, the fourth and the fifth or something. So it's yeah. Because I know it's right after I come back from Illinois. And I come back up from Illinois like on the fifth. Well, let me see here. Eighth through the tenth. Yeah. August eighth through the tenth. So. No, the first weekend would not be the 4th and 5th unless no. well, whatever. it's a special week or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> whatever. So, very excited about that. So, please, if you can, join us in Nova Scotia. Um, also want to remind everybody about the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. It goes up every Friday, disunplugged.com. Uh, this week, uh, Australian listener Chris returns with a trip report from his solo Disneyland visit. And Tony has a review of Sunday Brunch at Knott's Berry Farm. So tune in Thursday for that. You can also subscribe to their show on iTunes. But links to all of that stuff, as, as I said before, on the show notes page, disunplug.com. Also want to give uh, uh, our Disneyland team and uh, the 38 other Dizzers who participated in the Coasting for Kids fundraiser for Give Kids the World. Um, you know, 38 people at seven different Cedar Fair parks across the country. And they broke last year's uh, oh, fundraising. They mm-hmm. raised over seven thousand dollars. Wow! Way to go! Give kids wow. the world a fantastic, fantastic job. Um, and Team East beat Team West by Yay! four. Yay! That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Go East. So, and uh, top fundraisers and other prize winners are going to be announced on the uh, on this week's show of the Disneyland edition of the Dis Unplugged. So. Um, we have another uh, entrance for the cast member Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. This one comes to us from Martin in Irvine, California, who writes, would like to nominate Thomas, I wish I knew his last name, from the Yachtsman Steakhouse. It's been almost five years since our dinner at the Yachtsman, but we all still discuss it fondly because of Thomas. It's funny, but after all these years, I can't tell you what he did that was so special, but I can tell you how he made us feel. He made us feel like we were at home like we were special, like we were part of the family. In fact, my daughter Marty, who's in the picture with him, still calls him Uncle Thomas. Mm-hmm. The Disney magic comes in many forms, but for us on our trip in 2009, the most magical form of all was in the form of our waiter, Thomas. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, that's what we're talking about. That's great. You know, and I love that, too, when he says, you know, can't really pinpoint exactly what it was. It was just, you know, it's the whole package. Yeah. Um, gotta love... You know, gotta love cast members like that, and that's why we're doing it. If you have a cast member story that you'd like to submit to our Hall of Fame podcast at disunplug.com, send us a picture of the cast member along with the story, and we will get it up on the show. And then we put them into our Hall of Fame gallery on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash disunplugged. You can head out there and check out all the all the people that uh, all the cast members that we've put in the Hall of Fame and. I've got a, I've got a few I'm sitting on that I want to put in, but it just seemed like I was always the one putting them in. I mean, even though we have a lot of listeners responding, we got a ton of uh, people that have submitted photos, and so, but I didn't want to just keep putting mine in. We had a great one. We went to um, Whispering Canyon for lunch yesterday, and he was just, you know, all, all the little things, and he brought me out like a little cup of 
Coke, you know, where the other people got the big ones, and he dressed, it was my son's birthday, and my son had sworn us all to secrecy not to say that it was his birthday, and his two-year-old son went, it's my daddy's birthday. <laughs> so the cast member dressed him up, he put a hat on him, and he made him look like the Statue of Liberty, and he had him standing there with a napkin and everything, and then put Mickey ears behind him. The guy was just awesome. That's great. All the way through the meal. Did you take a picture of him? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's submit that to the cast I member Hall of Fame. Under an alias. <laughs> <laughs> It's Jaffe from Norway. <laughs> <laughs> that works. <laughs> All right. And I uh, want to just uh, get to the poll results from last week. We asked you whether or not you were looking forward to Avatar Land at Animal Kingdom. And uh, interesting results. Uh, over Just over 1,600 people responded. 41% of you said yes, you were looking forward to uh, Avatar Land. 26%, which is kind of a scary number if you're Disney, saying not interested, and 33% taking the wait-and-see hmm. attitude. So it's kind of divided, yeah. uh, which is kind of consistent with what I've, I've heard talking to people about. You know, when you mention Avatar Land, you either get kind of a blank stare or yeah. a grimace. Um, but I'm, I'm sticking by my guns that I think once it opens and people see it, and I have no idea what's going to be there, I'm not, like, in the know on that. I just have this feeling when you have James Cameron and Joe Rohde working on something, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And so I think the skeptics are going to be silenced, and it's going to be amazing, and it's going to really reinvigorate Animal Kingdom. I think a lot of the things they're doing uh, at Animal Kingdom is really going to help to reinvigorate that park. I agree. And we're going to talk in a little bit about Rambe Nights, which some of these guys got a chance to experience this past Saturday. Um... But before we get to that, we just want to congratulate Todd Clift, who is the winner this week in our random draw from those who answer our poll. Todd will be getting a $50 Disney gift card, as we do every week. And we'll have the subject for next week's poll at the end of the show. So with that, we're going to move on to the news. And we are going to first talk about, rather than just do kind of typical news, we want to talk about all the things that are kind of going on right now, um, starting with uh, Harambe Nights. And uh, you guys had a chance to experience this. This is something they're doing on weekends through the summer at Animal Kingdom. And uh, kind of explain, those of you who were there, kind of explain what this was. All right, so I I guess I'll start. (laughs) Um, Basically, it's a hard ticket event, and it celebrates the anniversary of Lion King, but it uses the uh, facility and the actors and kind of showmanship of Festival of Lion King and Animal Kingdom to put on a, a big show. Uh, about Lion King. Uh, so you start off in Harambe Village with appetizers and drinks. And there's kind of fun stuff going on. There's like face paint. It's kind of like a social hour. You can get there early and kind of just hang out and talk. Um, and then you go into the seating and you sit in the theater for Festival of Lion King. And that's when they put on the show. And there's a celebrity narrator that reads passages from the movie. Um, and they intersperse that with actual clips that they show on the screen from the Lion King. Um, they're singing. There's a live orchestra all that kind of stuff. It was a beautiful show. I think we'll have stuff to talk about for sure. Um, But then after the show, you go out of the theater, and that's where the buffet is. And so there's open bar. There's multiple um, food stations set up all throughout um, Harambe Village, also back in Africa towards uh, Kilimanjaro Safari, all through that area. And there's desserts, drinks, food, live entertainment. There was a band, a lady singing, all that kind of stuff. Lots of stuff to do, and that lasted until about ten thirty, eleven. Yeah, 10:30. until they wow. until they kicked us out. Yeah, <laughs> until they kicked us like out. we closed yep. it. Yep. But we that's did. the basic premise of the whole event. Now, Corey, you had said to me that uh, this was almost like a media event. Well, it's like for me, it felt like it. You, the, like they always, um, like a lot of these events, they'll close off a, a section of the park, and they have you know all you can eat, all you can drink, and there are performers. It, that's what it felt like. It felt like a, which is a, a compliment. compliment. I mean, it, it, that's it's a massive compliment. The you know all you can eat, all you can drink, and a party um, at, atmosphere. So it really felt like a like a media event. Well, to me, it, it felt. Since I lived in Africa, I know I said to different people at the event... Oh, she's pulling the I lived in Africa card. <laughs> I really felt like I... I mean, it felt like where I used to go on vacation. A return it, to your people. Yes, it did. <laughs> and, it, and it felt like I got a chance to go back to Africa with my friends and have a party. That's cool. That's also high praise. You know, and I said that the, the detail, it, I felt like I went back, you know, many, many years. How was the food? I thought it was unreal. Yeah, it was I incredible. I thought it was very, very good. good. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, what kind? You, you talk about you know uh, all you can eat, all you can drink. What kind of beverages and alcoholic beverages? Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, they, they had. Um, there was. We have a menu somewhere. I mean, they had a selection of African wine, um, beer. Um, they had a, a certain rum drink that a lot of people were uh, were drinking. They were. It was like a juice. I didn't try the it. Jumbo, the jumbo, jumbo juice, juice or something. And they had a very heavy hand. It seemed like when they were with the alcohol. Yes. 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 And uh, okay, I'm just. My associate producer is telling me we have a video. He's Nell over here. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I like the dry wrist part. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So actually, yeah. Let's go ahead and play. Let's go ahead and play the video Craig put together. Uh, for those of you watching uh, live and on YouTube, you'll see the video. For those of you listening, you can head out to our YouTube channel, uh, YouTube.com/slash/wdwinfo, and check out uh, Craig's video. Awesome. Great job, Craig. Very nice. Great job on that video. Um, that looks that looks amazing. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was wondering because it's, this is not inexpensive. 
uh, $119 for adults, $79 for kids ages 3 through 9. Um, if you want premium floor seats, which some people, I will talk about in a second, were complaining about, 134 for adults, 94 for kids. Um, and uh, I'll, uh, if you're going to do this, do it fast because this is selling out. I mean, they're... They're Premium selling this out. It's all sold out, I think. Is it completely for, sold out? For every night oh, that they're wow. doing it. Wow. <clears throat> I'm not sure I would buy the premium. No. Though. But looking at the seats, if you look at the video, it, the, the entire concert, it reminds you a lot of, um, or me, it reminds me of Candlelight Processional. With the video and the you know the live singers, it's like, it, it, it's like African candlelight procession. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Now, where would Viola Davis was the guest narrator mm -hmm. uh, this weekend? How does that? How does the guest narrator work into this? Because they have, you know, they've really got some some big names coming in for this. I mean, Alfred Woodard, yeah, uh, is going to be doing it. Uh, you've got David Allen Greer doing it. Brian Stokes Mitchell. Um, so these are of Glee fame. <laughs> Frazier. That was a joke. <laughs> um, so basically the narrator reads these passages that are written and they kind of um, describe what's happening in the movie. So it, it's, it kind of tells the narrative of the Lion King. So that's kind of interspersed with the, the visuals that they show. Um, but they, they, it's kind of like Candlelight in the fact that they read these passages and then they end their readings and then they start singing or showing a movie clip. Or The, the gentleman that was next to her I mm -hmm. thought was very good also. There's you know, one of their... One of the Disney cast members does yeah. his part of the thing, and I thought he was very good, very engaging. And then they have the guests, and that that's got to be a little intimidating for the Disney cast members. Right. I mean, Viola Davis. I mean, I she's know. an Oscar-nominated yeah. actress. So, um, you know, that's and if you so if you can say that he did a good he job, did, great. He yeah. held his own opposite Viola <laughs> Davis. You know, absolutely. Um, regardless of what he can put on his resume, he can always say that. Um, and Alfred Woodard. Honestly, one of my all-time... I have very few favorite actors um, that no matter what they're in, I'll watch. Kevin Spacey is one. Alfred Woodard is another. I love her. Um, I don't think Kevin Spacey is going to be doing this. I don't think Kevin Spacey is going to be Give it a different feel. Maybe as, as his, in his House of Cards character, oh, that, would, cool. that would fit. But... Uh, so, I mean... so But for $119, which is what I paid for your tickets... Worth it? Not worth it? I think worth absolutely it. worth it. Um, I do want to mention, though, that we had some um, pretty big issues um, in the show itself. Yeah. Technical-wise, um, the audio was... Un you couldn't hear it? There really? Were, I, I, I left saying that if I didn't see the orchestra in front of me, I would have no idea that there was a live orchestra playing the music. It was very upsetting because we, we were in, the, um, we were in the, the back upper area, and there was a like a pipe above us and just this rushing water. Yeah, it sounded and like it, it's, it was making It was the, the entire show. And Now, this is the new facility mm -hmm. that was built for Festival of the Lion King, am I correct? Mm -hmm. um, and do you think this was just opening night? Because it, it was the first night they were doing it, quote-unquote. It but the show had been open for a couple of days, or for a, yeah. uh, at least uh, well, the show, five days. So the Lion King had been open, but they had not yeah, this performed This is not this, this show. No. no, but what I'm saying right. is the theater's been used for a week. Right. So, I mean, this was right, like a first But they're not thing. using a live orchestra yeah. at Festival of the Lion King. They no, I'm talking about the pipe, though. Yeah, I mean, the pipe. Yeah. Yeah. A, a yeah. Little, yeah. The other, was that the reason you couldn't hear? Yeah. Or yeah. Yes. Well, this, there was a speaker that we could visibly see right in front of us, and that wasn't even turned on at all. So, I mean, it really comes through in the video. Like, we, we shot the entire thing, and whenever it's just speaking um, with the other narrator and Viola Davis, like... You just hear this boom, 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 boom going on because it yeah. sounds like an air conditioner is mm -hmm. kicking through. It was hard to mentally filter that out. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. kept hearing it. It was like somebody kicking the back of your seat at a move, at a, at a show, and you couldn't do anything about it. That's sort of like, okay, what is this? <laughs> but it was a good experience. Oh yeah, oh, the, the yeah. after party was amazing. And and had we had we sat somewhere else, I think we would have enjoyed the show. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, a lot more. Yeah. yeah. And even even with that noise, I did enjoy the show. Yeah. They integrated um, songs and performances from the Lion King musical, um, which I thought was a really nice touch. Um, I think that they probably could have used a little bit more of the live singing. Yeah. That that was a really cool thing to bring in. They relied a lot on kind of the movie clips. But even that was kind of cool because it was telling that story. But I thought it was it was amazing. Yeah. I hope that they continue to do it or at least expand it longer throughout the summer. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I'm guessing if they've completely sold out, they're probably looking at ways to expand mm -hmm. that. But fantastic. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Uh, next, I want to talk about another hard ticket event that Disney announced last week, um, which I believe I predicted would have to go to a hard ticket event after the success it had 
last year as just a general free-for-all, uh, Villains Unleashed at Hollywood Studios happening uh, August 23rd. Um, now, last year we talked about this, and uh, I mean, it was, I mean, it was very successful, but unbelievably crowded and traffic jams around Hollywood Studios like no one had ever seen before. Craig and his girlfriend <laughs> Kylie ended up parking at Art of Animation and walking <laughs> oh, wow. yeah. over to Hollywood Studios. That's how bad it was. People were trapped on Disney buses. There were stories of people like literally forcing their way off buses in traffic they because revolting. they couldn't, it would stop. They couldn't move. This might have to be a swan and dolphin night. Yeah, just walk right over. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, Sixty-seven dollars each um, is the price for for this. You guys, uh, Sean and Craig, you were there last year. Is yeah. it worth sixty-seven dollars? Um, my personal opinion, yeah, it's going to be worth it uh, as long as it, it's capped off at a nice level. Uh, because the night we were there, obviously, as we said, it's it was ridiculous. Uh, the lines for the meet and greet were probably well over mm-hmm. two hours just to meet a couple characters and you never knew which ones you were going to get you could get up there and think you're going to meet someone cool and then all of a sudden it switches out so there were a lot of issues with that but um, apparently they're even tweaking the villainy in the sky fireworks which I thought were one of the best fireworks that uh, I've seen at Hollywood Studios now since they started yeah, bringing back tre- fireworks. How can you tweak perfection I mean yeah. that was those were amazing fireworks last year. I hope they make it longer and well, add yeah. more fireworks but uh, I, I totally think it's going to be worth it um because especially after the uh, the 24 hour day, whenever they saw the response to all the villains there and everything that went along with that, they're gonna they're gonna find even more ways to make this event very special. So I'm I'm looking forward to it. I agree. I think when they add stuff and then, like Craig said, they cap it so it's not unbearable to be in the right. park with all those people. I think it would be definitely worth it. Yeah. So I um, I'm excited because we've got a bunch of tickets for this. So I'm excited yeah, it's to gonna see. Be nice. It. Uh, this year, uh, the other thing uh, new this week or recently, Co-op Marketplace, which I've been very excited about at uh, Downtown Disney, and I believe Sean Craig and Kathy have had a mm-hmm. chance to check that out. So, tell me a little bit about uh, what it is and what you thought of it. They took Team Disney and turned it into a bunch of little like storefronts with all kind of different merchandise. Is it almost like a flea market environment? Or? No, it's like an upscale really nice in there you know a nice wide walkway through the middle with your shops off to the side and then there's one down at the end but like merchandise we've never seen before mm. in there um there so was not the place, regurgitated no no there was like a, a spot you can get iphone cases that you can do custom ones they had a different type of jewelry and like purses and shawls and uh, funky looking tennis shoes. There was all. Co- I can't wait to go back and spend money in there. It's. Did they have it? Did they have it themed in a way so like each section had a, a certain feel to it, or mm-hmm. was it just kind of yeah. scattered all over no, the place? No, no. It's like there was like the home goods or the home it's area. It's like a little department store. Yeah, it, it's set of. up boutique style. Yeah. is the word they're using to describe mm-hmm. the. Okay. It's one big area. Brilliant. But then there's like the, the way that I was talking to Stephen Miller, the one of the guys that works for uh, Disney Social Media. He. They uh, are merchandising. They set up the shelves so that they're modular, so that they they're all on wheels, so they can make new spaces and new rooms. So if they want to expand something into two of the spaces, they can make one huge store inside instead of just the smaller one. So they've really done a good job with this. And so, like Kathy was talking about the the home goods one, that's called centerpiece, and that's where all the really cool theme park merchandise is. So they have the plates, the glasses, the the mugs, the t- tiki I'm, mugs, Adventureland pillows. Yeah, I'm afraid it, it could be dangerous. Are those on plates on ceramic or? Are they There's a mix. Some, Most yeah. of them are okay. plastic, but some of them are like bamboo right. and ceramic. Right. <clears throat> nice. What other uh, what other types of stores? Well, then they also have uh, Cherry Tree Lane, and uh, that's where you're going to find a lot of the purses and stuff. So they have new Mary Poppins style oh. merchandise, an umbrella bag, um, a couple other things. And then that's where they're also selling the Vera Bradleys right now, as long as they can keep them in mm-hmm. stock. Um, Dooney and Burks as well. Uh so that's that's kind of all the way in the back. As Kathy mentioned, they have the D Tech on demand, where you can make iPhone cases for four, or five, um, and then that's they finally cool. added Samsung, uh, the Galaxy S4, not the S5 yet, and then like one other phone model. But they have about 
what would you say, maybe 30 to 40 different choices? Yeah, yeah and, customize and the good thing about that is I think that in the future they'll expand that to even more. Yeah. Um, so like Kevin John artwork. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, it, it's cool. They have all these iPads set up, and you just go and scroll through. You find what phone you have, and then you choose from any of the backgrounds, and then they make it for you right there um, wow. on the spot. And depending on how many people are there, it can take anywhere from about five minutes to half an hour, and maybe I'm, even longer. And I'm guessing the selections are not what you can already buy nope. all, everywhere else. Yeah, it's mostly. All, Mostly kind of, brand new stuff. What kind of um, pricing are we talking for that kind of stuff? Thirty six ninety five if you want just a regular phone case uh, with no customization, but then you can also add your your name onto it or your social security number, any, yeah. any type yeah. of information. Uh, and that's forty one ninety five, I believe. Oh, so um, steep. It is. Yeah, for but, a phone uh, case. I mean, we won't have a kind, right? Unless someone else comes along and does exactly it, what you do. Yeah, but no one, I don't know who actually wants to put their name and cover up some of the amazing artwork. Like, they have a wall, right. an e-phone case, they have a up phone case, just stuff that they've never really kind of dived into okay. before that now they have it, and it's amazing. And while I was standing there alone, I saw, like, three or four people with the, the wall e-case and the up mm-hmm. case right away. I mean, Kylie was one of them. So and I do want to mention <laughs> that uh, right now you can get uh, cases that have the resort logos, yeah. for DVC resorts. So it, it, for every DVC resort they have, you can get a really nice designed um, Why not iPhone the other case. resorts? I don't know. They have this DVC member badge in the corner yeah. of them. So like, even if I wanted one that said Alani or something, I, I wouldn't get it because it says DVC member, right? So hopefully they expand that later. Yeah. yeah. But it's a good sign to start, I think. So if they have these what now... Is their, what is their aversion to resort-specific merchandise? We started to see it come back. We started to... And now it's going away again. And... It just makes no sense to me. You that, see it at Art of Animation still. You know, I think that's the one of the resorts that still has a but lot. But even of at like Yacht and Beach Club, I mean, usually you could find it at the deluxes. But even at Yacht and Beach Club, it's starting to get scarce. When we talked to the guys uh, at the Contemporary that worked at the shop at the Contemporary, uh, which has nothing except for a commemorative pin, right? Um, they told us that. It's up to each general manager or each merchandise manager at the actual hotels to put those orders in for that kind of merchandise. Hmm. So it's not like uh, the whole Disney World company is making that decision. It's it's whether or not the general managers or the merchandise managers at that hotel feels like it can sell or not. All right, so let's do this then. If you're like me and you want to see this merchandise at the resort, start complaining to the resort. Start complaining to the general manager of the resort and let him or her put pressure on their merchandise manager to start putting this stuff in. It's ridiculous when you spend that kind of money to go on vacation. And you want to, I don't want to remember my Walt Disney Parks and Resorts vacation. (laughs) I want to remember my vacation at the Contemporary or at Art of Animation or at, you know, whatever hotel, Wilderness Lodge. Uh, That's what I want to remember. I want to have a shirt or a coffee cup or something. Not a pin, right? Or even a magnet, for that matter. You know, it, it just drives me insane. Drives me insane. So if you're like me, you know, maybe we should just get a list together of all the email, the email addresses of all the general managers, <laughs> and oh. publish them on the site. If anybody knows where to get that, send it to me, please. <laughs> um, but no, I think that's I, a good idea. I think it's it's time. It's time. Let's start putting pressure on these guys. I mean, it's ridiculous. Resort-specific merchandise, every damn hotel in the country, with the exception maybe of some of your lower-end chains, will sell. Every resort, every destination <laughs> resort <Motel> will sell <laughs> logo merchandise. They want you wearing it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you know, oh, did you stay there? What did you think of it? Maybe that's why Disney stopped doing it. Oh, what did you think of it? Yeah, it was a crappy hotel. Um, but... I, th- I think you know that that getting rid of that resort specific merchandise has been a pet peeve of mine for a while. So, I heart one ninety two. I was thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of like a La Quinta Polo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, speaking of resorts and something that's resort specific, uh, Port Orleans is going to be the uh, test bed for a uh, a project. I guess which is part of the My Disney Experience. If you are Staying there June 16th through the 28th, you may be selected as part of this. You will not have to go to the check-in desk. They will text you or email you 
when your room is ready with the room number and you just go right to your room with your magic band and in you go. Wow. And I think this is only for guests who have had their magic bands mailed to them. Um, so you have to have your magic bands already uh, upon arrival. So if you don't have them and you're going to check in to get them, obviously it defeats the purpose. But this could be very cool. Mm-hmm. Skipping the whole check-in process, yeah. going right to your room. If they can make that work with my Disney experience, that's going to be a big feather in the cap of that of that project. Um, Especially for repeat visitors that have already been through that routine already, they don't need to go. They don't need that spiel of how many theme parks there right, are and all this stuff. Right, but that sort of web building, yeah. yeah. But I think like people that um, you know, maybe it's their first trip. They might want to go in right. that lobby first and experience talk to a cast member right away but I think it's a nice option that's the, and that's my only thought Corey with this when I heard about it first of all you know the hit the ground running type of um, visitor uh, guest I think this is perfect for it. the repeat guest however you, you know how many but are you going to be missing out on that um, on those magic moments that you get with that check-in I mean I can when I used to travel here I can remember almost every check-in and those really special moments at that cast member you know whether it was a um, you know a special theme that day or watching the cast members dance to a certain song at, at you know 7 p.m. or a, a, a flower given to you know the female guests you know um, that's again those things along with the merch like you're talking about that that used to set this resort apart and um, we still need to hold on to that but and you know my experience though lately um checking into the hotels it's become very generic mm. um and you know I, I i do think that Walt disney service i st- still think is 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 definitely a higher standard um i don't see a lot of difference anymore between the experience I have checking into a Disney hotel and the experience I have checking into a Westin um, or a uh, you know a Hilton, um, it doesn't feel much different to me anymore. Well, maybe when they they do this test, maybe they'll see that for first time guests they need they they should go to the desk for the first time. So you sort of get like the lay of the land and how yeah. things should be, and then if you've been there. A number of times you could just go. Well, that's the other thing. You know, with certain resorts, okay, but with some, with a lot of resorts, they're spread out over a big, like Port Orleans Riverside. If you've never been there before, even if you have, I've been there, you know, I've right. stayed there half a dozen times. I get lost trying to find some of these buildings. And, you know, one of the things that does help on check-in, out comes the map. Here you are. Right. Here's where you're going. Here's right. how you get right. the park here. And, yeah. um, Think you know, of Caribbean ha- Beach because exactly. You know that that's a whole separate building. You know, and you're just going to send a first time guest. Well, hey, find your way to your room. God exactly. help you if you get to the room and the key doesn't work. It's yeah, like, I got to go all the way back. Oh, that's ha- that happened to me. It uh, that happened to me at Port Orleans Riverside where I had to make two trips back to uh, mm. the front desk from you know like New yeah. Jersey. Yeah, that's a trip. You know? <laughs> and you know, so that that can get annoying as well. But interesting to see how this test goes. And if you end up being one of the people that is uh, part of the test, please send us an email, podcast at disunplug.com. Let us know how that went and what you thought of it. Um, and finally, in the news, we're going to talk about the construction walls are down at Diagon Alley at uh, Universal Orlando. And uh, kind of exciting. Kind of exciting. Yeah. There's a lot of hype around this. Greg, you were over there yesterday. What did you, what'd you think? Uh, I mean, it, it's amazing, to say the least. Uh, Universal has taken everything that they learned from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Hogsmeade, and they've just upped the level even more. Uh, they, they had to, kind of, because this had so much hype behind it. And right now, we've only seen the, the London waterfront. They took the walls down the front, so now we have clear views of the night bus, um, where there, people are going to enter and exit into Diagon Alley itself. We can see Grimald Place perfectly, um, King's Cross Station now, um, it, which was getting everyone excited because all of the the team members there that were learning how to do the new ticket system and practice getting people through quickly, they're all standing there scanning tickets over and over yeah. again. So then everyone thought, like, oh, it's going to soft open now because they're all standing in place practicing. But... Uh, they didn't. Nothing's happening for a while, um, but no, it's I, I 
I struggle to find words. I've never been to London, but if it from everything I'm hearing, it looks basically spot on. The I mean, facades are beautiful. The I facades mean, are beautiful. The details yeah. they put into these buildings is unreal. The uh, the video that you did um, is very detailed. We also have a, a blog that's very detailed about uh, all the stuff that's in uh, that's now yep. visible mm-hmm. because the walls are down. So if you want to uh, check out that video and others, you can go to youtube.com slash WDW info to see uh, Craig's video of all the details that we can get so far of uh, the Diagon Alley yeah. walls being down. Good point. Um, but so we have the uh, media event coming up on the 17th to the 19th. So we're not actually going to be able to film our Universal show that Tuesday night uh, next week for it. So that's why we want to kind of talk about it now because the next time we do talk about it, it's all going to be completely open up for us at least, and then maybe soft openings as well. But. Uh, from what we've seen now, I, I can't even imagine what it's going to look like on the inside. Um, do, you, do you want to tell the people what your plans are for your next show? Uh, I, I guess that should probably... Should we? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you tell them. I okay. Um, so, on Friday, after we're done with the media event, so I believe it's May 20th... Mm-hmm. June. Are, June. Mm-hmm. June. Okay. Uh, June 20th, um, we're actually going to go out live here... Um, yeah, we said that we're going to go out live. We're going to go out live here. <laughs> That's been fine the past few times. Yeah, it's, it's, we're figuring it out slowly but surely. Um, so right after the day after we're done seeing everything, we'll mm-hmm. work all night to get everything ready to show you all. And, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be exciting. I We haven't set the perfect time yet, but we'll let you know well, yeah, we'll the figure Tuesday it out. show. Yeah. We'll announce it then. And we'll have lots of photos, yeah. videos to share. Oh, yeah. What will hopefully have been on both rides. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe. So June 20th. Maybe. Yeah. June 20th, you're going to want to tune in to Zunplug.com for the live broadcast of uh, the Universal Edition. All about Diagon Alley. And I'm very excited. Very excited to see that. (laughs) Yep. All right. That is going to do it for the news this week. We're going to move on to our caption this from last week. We had a picture of Teresa in Sorrento during an Adventures by Disney excursion uh, making pizza. And... uh, Some of the captions that uh, came up from Jamie Sims, when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, (laughs) that's Teresa. (laughs) Uh, Mark Joe Friday, we are proud to announce the Disboards.com Welcome Center is now featuring fresh pizza. (laughs) And from uh, Timothy Gamble, uh, Teresa was surprised to finally find something that didn't make her cry. This discovery made her cry. (laughs) So funny. So, very good. Uh, this week, our caption this photo is a picture of Dustin from our trip to Hawaii last year. Where we did a tour of this uh, area where they filmed part of some of the scenes for Jurassic Park. And uh, Dustin is reenacting a famous scene from uh, the movie. And I actually have some audio to go along with this picture. If well, I can, hold, on, uh, hold, hold on a second. Oh. I'll, I'll <laughs> cue you on that. Okay. Um, first of all, can we show the picture again, please? Yes. Um, and uh, so this will be on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash disunplugged, for you to add your caption. And now, Dustin has some audio to go along with. To Jurassic Park. <laughs> so these guys can't hear it. No. I thought you were going to show the video. No, I couldn't get the video up, but we have the audio. Um, there is a, a video that went viral on YouTube uh, of, you know, uh, the very dramatic scene, Welcome to Jurassic Park, yeah. where they, you know, that John Williams, or was it John Williams? Yeah, yeah. John Williams. Um, and instead of the John Williams score, it's a couple of guys on a melodica, so it's kind of like, harmon- it's hysterical. Um, so it's like one of my one of my favorite things. Every time I hear it, I crack up. Um, but uh, actually, put a link to it in the show notes yeah. page so people can see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Crouching by a tree. That is our caption this for next week, <laughs> and uh, that'll be up later on today on uh, on the Dis Unplugged Facebook page. Yes. And now we're going to move on to rapid fire, and we're going to start with Lady Whirling. Okay. 
<laughs> Mine. Mine's going to take a really long time. They the lifted video. the blackout date for the military tickets for July 4th. That's my rapid fire. Why are there any blackout dates on military tickets? I always think it's just because they can. But why? You know, okay. I don't think I wasn't, it should be, but... I wasn't planning, I wasn't planning a rant here, but... Um, are you serious? They black out military tickets? Mm-hmm. There's certain days. Oh, look at the days. Okay. I'll keep this short. Shame on you, Disney. Shame on you. Okay? Shame on you. No blackout dates for military tickets. Come on. Come on. Really? It looks like I, I happen to have one, but they were um, for this this year. It was through Christmas. It was the 19th to the 31st, and then it was blocked out for Easter. So There shouldn't be any blackout dates. No. So they lifted the them. Right. They lifted it for July 4th. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's mighty big of them. Yeah, it's mighty oh big of them. Gosh. Yeah, it's not like they're it's not like they're getting free tickets. They're still paying for. It doesn't tickets. matter. Right. It doesn't matter. You know, first of all, I think they should get free tickets. Actually, <clears throat> okay. especially if they've seen active uh, active combat. Um, you know what? They should get free stuff. But uh, least we can do. Uh, these guys sure. are taking bullets while we're over here taking pictures with Mickey Mouse. Um, but to have blackout dates and restrictions on when military families, especially when you consider the families who have military members in active deployment and there are you know there may be really really brief limited times uh Mm -hmm. where they can go Mm -hmm. and what if that's a blackout period are you kidding me because you can get a higher price for the ticket or you can get full price for a ticket you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna come on that's crazy it's crazy so i'm glad to hear they lifted it but they shouldn't have it in the first place so i'm not giving them any brownie points for that but thank you kathy Teresa. All right. Um, the Welcome Center, we're into our summer hours now, now that the magic has gone to the Mediterranean for the summer and early fall. Um, we've changed. We're going to be closed now on Mondays and Tuesdays and open Wednesday through Friday, 9 to 5, and weekends, 9 to 3. What time do you serve the pizza? The pizzas are at noon. Okay. you got to pick them up before you bring them in. <laughs> and yeah. uh, 6550. Sweet B North sixty five fifty North Atlantic Avenue. Mm-hmm. Sweet B. Sweet B. And it's about uh, a mile down the road from uh, mm-hmm. Port Canaveral. And the beach is right there. Too. And the beach is like two blocks away. And if you are a Dreams Unlimited travel client, we have a special gift for you when you come in. You do. And if it's a really nice day, I'll lock up and walk you down to the beach. No, I can't, I can't do that. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. And the gift is uh, Teresa will dance, the dance of the seven veils. Yes, I'll do my interpretive dance and, and song from your native <laughs> country, whatever it may be. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Teresa. And we have an interesting rapid fire from Kevin John. Uh, hi, Pete. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go on. Uh, go so bold, Kev. Good job. Yeah, good job. You've probably been sitting here an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> I am so incredibly blessed and thrilled to be here to talk about this with with you all. Um, We're glad you're here. Thank you Good so to much. See you again. This is really, I, this, I'm, I'm over the moon. This is a such a dream come true um, in so many ways. And, you know, we've talked about it before, how uh, I've been so influenced by, um, by you all, you know, to um, pursue moving here and, um, and moving my company here and, and growing it in, in different, different directions. Um, and so this is just amazing. Uh, who, how, how, we did not, this wasn't part of the plan of becoming a Disney artist. None of this was, it was a dream. It was, you know, building a ladder to the moon, but, um, you know, something way back here that never imagined would happen. And, uh, you know, so I've been here two years, coming in July, and I signed my contract with Disney about a year and a half ago. And my first piece uh, will go, uh, has gone to print and will be released in the parks uh, this coming uh, end of end of June. End so of June. Saturday, June twenty eighth, at the Art of Disney in Epcot, I will uh, with Disney release um, my first Disney piece called Flowers and Figment. It's an awesome piece too. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, my direction from Disney has been to really capture uh, not so much uh, specifically just the characters, but the environments, the attractions, the things that we all love about the parks. And if I can combine that with some 
with some great uh, character and whatnot, then uh, then then that's great too. This was originally supposed to be a piece that um, uh, would be featured at Flower and Garden, and uh, we got it done on time. But then this special figment event uh, came up, and they kind of postponed the release of the of the prints for this. So um, I will be there signing the prints, doing special penciled remark original sketches of figment on the pieces that are purchased that day. Wow. So not only are you getting um, a, a limited edition piece, but I'm there to personalize the print and then do a small penciled remark on the print as well. Only the ones that are sold that day. From 1 until 3 at the Art of Disney Gallery in Epcot on Saturday, June 28th. Um, I can't wait to see you all. We have built so much momentum um, uh, through Facebook and, and online and everything, and just meeting the new Disney community and new Kevin John fans of, uh, of my work now from the Disney side of things that I'm doing, and I'm, I'm just thrilled. So that's really uh, what I'm here to talk about, but I know we're going to go into more. Yeah, we are going to talk a little bit mm -hmm. and, and a little bit more about that, but I just also, uh, you know, Kevin was uh, is uh, a very famous sports artist, uh, has been doing... Uh, sports art for 20, what, 27 years. For 27 yeah. years. Mm -hmm. So this isn't, you know, just kind of stumbling into this. Right. This is a really established artist, and the stuff he has been producing is unbelievable. That, Thank you. The, the hat box. Thank you. Oh Thank my you. God. Thank you. And um, the figment. And the figment. Yeah. Right. You've got figments. <laughs> you've got figments. Business, biggest fan. We're showing the, the hat box piece that you did uh, right now on video. Um, and we'll have links to everything on the show notes page. You guys have got to check out his work. It's unbelievable. And where I feel blessed is that, you know, uh, I, 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 love, I love Disney art. Um, you know, big Disney fan. Uh, my house is full of this stuff. Um, and, you know, being friends. I've, I've made friendships with a, a few Disney artists, yourself included. Um, and for me, it's just, it's just so exciting it's so exciting mm -hmm. and kevin came in with his portfolio is oh my god seeing it some seeing it on stuff. facebook is one thing but seeing See, it in person it's something else it really is it's tremendous yeah. stuff it's really real and i don't just say that cuz he's sitting here I, I, he's sitting here cuz i love his stuff thank you um, and of course if we go to the wide shot in the back um, you can the bob. those of you watching you can see the bob varley uh, um, uh, uh, drawing that Kevin John did that sits back there now. Um, uh, Kevin did that for us a few years ago when he was on the show. Right. It was before we went video, and uh, and so I just love your stuff. Thank and you. I'm going to talk to you a little bit more in a few minutes. Wonderful uh, about your stuff. But uh, September 28th, Art of Disney, Epcot, be there. June 28th. What's that? June. 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 What did I say? September. September. June. June 28th. You're happy. He's in Italy. Italy. Yeah. <laughs> But June twenty eighth, Art of Disney at Epcot, one to three p.m. Kevin John signing his uh, his figment piece. Um, I will be there. I will absolutely be there. And I know mm -hmm. wild horses aren't going to be happy. Yeah. I should be dressed like figment. Yeah. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Corey. The Intermission Food Court at All Star Music Resort is scheduled to be closed August 1st through December 20th for refurb. A temporary grab-and-go station uh, location will be available in the arcade serving salad sandwiches, desserts, and refillable mug stations. The Singing Spirits Bar will be open serving food and offering a refillable mug station. Guests will also be able to use the All Star Sports Resort, which was remodeled late last year. So this refurb is happening straight through free dining so nice. it's, it's it's unfortunate but that that uh food court needs to be redone oh in a bad in way the, in the worst yeah. and and really seems to be that when they redo the food courts they get a lot better the food gets a lot better and the layout gets better so disney's learned a lot since they opened that resort in terms of what to do with food courts art of animation is a great example of that yeah. Um, this still doesn't make it easy for the people staying there. It's no, definitely an inconvenience, yeah. but in the long run, it's going to be great. Absolutely. All right, thank you, Corey. Dustin? Uh, yeah, I have some interesting news about the uh, the World Cup. Uh, you're going to be able to catch some of the uh, World Cup soccer games. They're going to be broadcasted at Disney World uh, Live 
And that is, uh, uh, you'll catch the games while you're on vacation at Walt Disney World. The games run from June 12th through July 13th. So it's a full month of World Cup. And uh, it will be shown live on multiple screens screens in the former Odyssey restaurant in Epcot. Um, The Germany Pavilion will also host a soccer experience to commemorate the event. Um, And then the popular soccer topiary scene in World Showcase, and that entrance to World Showcase is still in place from the Flower and Garden Festival. So Epcot is doing a lot for the uh, the World Cup, including broadcasting uh, in the Odyssey. They should do a uh, soccer restaurant. overlay on the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? That would be. Yeah, I would actually enjoy that. So, so if you're uh, World Cup fans and you don't want to miss it while you're on vacation, head to Epcot. I want to go over just to have food in the Odyssey, in the Odyssey yeah. because yeah. I had never yeah. been in there when it was operating. So I think right. that would Same be here. cool. Same here. That's right, and they will be serving snacks and drinks at the Odyssey. Sorry, I didn't mention that, Kathy. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> All right, thank you, Dustin. Yeah, Gregory. Okay, uh, new information came out about Horror Nights uh, that I wanted to bring up now since we won't Halloween. talk about it for a while. Horror Nights? Halloween Horror Nights. Um, Please enunciate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My bad. It sounded like you said something else. I was half out the door. I, <laughs> I have that issue sometimes. Uh, so the 24th year um, is is a big announcement because uh, Walking Dead's coming back for an unprecedented third year. Uh, so fans of the show like it. Fans of Halloween Horror Nights are not really happy about it. But Well, I was just going to say, okay, you know, one of the things that I've always loved about Halloween Horror Nights is that really creative in terms of reinventing it every year. And now it seems like they're just riding the marketing train. I... There's a lot of rumors going around that whenever they first signed with AMC's The Walking Dead, that it was for a three-year contract. So they had to they had to use it up eventually. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. That's just speculation among lots of people. But uh, they could who have just knows. turned it into a house, though, instead of making it the theme in the it's, whole. It's not the theme this year. Okay. Last year it was the theme um, for the most part, but this year it, it's not the theme. It's going to be the largest maze they've ever done. Uh, twice the size of any other maze they've ever had. Uh, it's going to require oh. double the scare actors. So it it should be good in terms of that, but most people are sick of The Walking Dead. Uh, not the show itself. Hey, okay. Not the show itself, <laughs> okay. but at this event. At I mean, this event, yeah. It, it doesn't necessarily need to be there. But and that 10 minute loop of music that they play all night. Exactly. Uh, For twice as long. But so that was announced. Um, no 20 minute loop. Tickets are also now available to do it too. And depending on when you get them, pre ordering, it starts from like $95 going up to ridiculous amounts of money if you want to do stuff like that. They're charging the $95. Yeah. If you just buy it with a normal, uh, a normal pass, if you get it, uh, if you get it with a day ticket already, they sell it for about half the price, except for on um, like the busiest Saturday of the year, and that one is still like seventy or eighty dollars added already onto your park ticket. And also, if you get like what is it, a Coke can? Yeah, uh, yeah. In Orlando, um, you're yeah. gonna get it for like half price. And Florida residents get a great rate already as it is. Yeah. Um, and then they have the frequent fear passes. So you, it's. There is a lot of different rates. I'm sorry, I don't have them in front of me because the slides are in front of me. Um, but that that was all announced. Um, also, just wanted to mention too that Universal uh, unveiled a new iPhone app that kind of has wait times that are now adjusted by the actual employees who are currently working at the ride. So you'll always have the most up to date wow. wait times because oh, they're cool. constantly doing it throughout the day. And it's a really nice um, app too. Yeah, it's developed great. really well. Um, it's a nice design and really easy to use. So, yeah, we're probably going to do a review of that on the show, one of the shows coming up once we get to use it in the parks and mess around with that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of lot of universal stuff to mention, and we'll go over that eventually on the show. Uh-huh. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Gregory. Jonathan? All right. Um, so there are two new snacks you can get at the uh, African Refreshment Cool Post at the Trading Post in Epcot's World Showcase. Um, they've brought pineapple soft serve and coconut soft serve to oh. that snack area. Oh, I think that sounds delicious. Co- yeah. Coconut soft serve? Yeah, yeah it does sound good. You like so coconut pie. It's Dustin's pretty- making this face like... Coconut is... I can't Crack imagine soft serve. Cold... 
Milky coconut. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's disgusting. Don't say it like that. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's refreshing. No, I think it's, it's refreshing. Great. And you can even swirl the two together um, and, and get it combined. That's so, even better. It's three ninety nine. You can well use a snack pack. Well <laughs> applause. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say though, it's interesting that they can't. They don't use the word dull in any of this. Just like they, they can't in uh, Animal Kingdom either for those pineapple yeah. soft serves. Can they use the word rum. rum in it? They can use yeah. rum. I don't, think they, I don't know if they're doing that at, at Epcot, though, but they definitely are in Animal Kingdom. Rum and Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to try it. It sounds good. Very good. Does cool. sound good. Bring me one. I will. Yes, now. <laughs> Go, fetch. We have an intern. <laughs> Go get a soft serve. Um, can he uh, do that? No. 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 <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Uh, before we get to next week's poll question, we want to spend a few minutes talking with our, our friend Kevin John. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's funny, you kind of alluded to it briefly. Um, you know, we talk about people living the dream. Um, you know, you moved down here a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it, was, you know, it wasn't even a, a gleam in your eye, really, to even think about doing the work, uh, doing the work with Disney as an artist. Um, but like I said, you know, 20 some odd years as you know, sports artists, and you've got you've got quite the following. You've got a, a great uh, built a great career for yourself. Thank you. What was that process like for you, going from you know the world you knew to the world you're in now? It's it's a complete reinvention, um, and and I, I love the process because um, it it has taken me to a creativity level that I have not been in 25 years really um you know pete i i established kind of a kind of a formula for drawing the the sports figures you know bodies are all pretty much the same little tweak here little tweak there and i know what it takes to draw fabrics and i know what it takes to paint skin and and that sort of thing so you know i became almost like a machine where um you know a lot went into the marketing of of the product you know to the athletes and to the teams and doing the appearances and the signings and all of that and then the hard labor in my studio but it was you know really not a lot of creativity when it came to developing each individual piece you kind of have a formula and you stick with that formula because it's working you don't mess with it too much um it, 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 for me, that that whole process over the last 27 years was was building the brand to a national level, right. getting more clients. What different clients would leave, leave trading cards? Beckett Media w- would hire me to create special projects for them, uh, other teams and athletes, and ESPN, and doing all of those things was more the creative um, end for me rather than the hands-on art creativity. With this, I am just I am so inspired to push myself to be more creative in so many different directions and completely taking me in a different direction. Um, you know, first of all, like, you know, like I've said before, you know, I'm colorblind. So half of what you see there um, in paint, I can't see. Um, wow. So I, I'm having to teach myself to now think in, in terms of color in painting, um, not just the, the sports figures like I kind of developed a, a formula for, but now trees and scenery and, and character, and I'm not a character artist either. So now I have to learn how to create yes, characters. Yes, you are. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you thank are. You. Thank you. I hate, um, to, hate to correct you, but you mm-hmm. are. Thank you. So it, it really is pushing me in, 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 in directions and pushing me in a way that I've never been. The process, the transition was was interesting. I mean, I still keep the sports end and the pop culture end of my company running, running strong and gaining more momentum now because I have the Disney brand behind me on the other side of things. But um, this is, I'm learning to work again within the corporate um, uh, environment and the checks and balances that all the work has to go through and the approval processes, which I was talking to Corey and he and I have a, a, an appreciation for that because it pushes us to become better artists right. where we haven't, we don't really have that critique. The, the only critique that I've had for 27 years is people plunking down a check in front of me to say all my <laughs> stuff. But now I have a critique of, 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 of the Disney company and their advisory board and their approval board um, that says, okay, we want to go in this direction, change this, tweak that. We'd like to see this different. But I also, from what, what, what I've heard uh, from other, other Disney artists, is A, that they're great to work with, mm-hmm. and it's very collaborative, mm-hmm. um, that they really do give the artist, they give you as an artist a lot of leeway. Absolutely. Um, which I think is, 
you know, really says something because Disney is a company known for control. Right. Um, and in terms, I guess, in, in, in terms of some maybe specifics, they want to make sure it's like this or it's like that just to keep keep the, the, the intellectual property, right. uh, have some integrity. Um, what, uh, to kind of step me through, step me through, you know, you coming up with a concept and how that, how that process goes. I, I, I think I love this m- more than anything. I have complete um, freedom to create whatever I want to create, uh, come up with ideas that I want to come up with. So I think for my first piece that and now I started almost a year ago, and it's been in the gallery um, since uh, December of last year, um, I wanted to knock the doors down. I wanted to make a statement that Kevin John, the Kevin John brand was now associated with Disney, and I wanted to blow the doors open. Um, what better than one of my favorite attractions, the Haunted Mansion? Mm-hmm. What better than the infamous Hatbox Ghost, which really hasn't been captured by Disney artists much? There's a lot of fan art out there, but in terms of Disney, they really have not done many approvals in terms of Hatbox Ghost because he has been such an infamous character. So I was able to get access to photographs and archival materials of that audio animatronic that would blow your mind the detail in the photos that they that they allowed me to work from and they wanted me to kind of put my own Kevin John style to it so the dripping torso is what you see there in that in that um, in that portrait that is something that I pulled over from the sports um, styling that's definitely your style yeah. thank you thank yeah. you and and quite frankly that's what got me my job with Disney they they they, they reached out to me because um, of my uh, sense for realism. They have a lot of great character artists, but not a lot of artists that can capture realism. So that's kind of what got me the, the, the gig with yeah. Disney. And um, the, the dripping torso style, what I'll call that, is another thing that they just, they really loved. So as many times I can incorporate that, I'm going to. And it worked just mm-hmm. perfectly with Hatbox Ghost. Um, that... Um, what you start with is is really a very simple, um, very simple pencil concept. Just kind of get the idea on paper, and I submit that. And there's a um, that goes in front of an advisory board, and you you kind of submit the whole package. Uh, this is the idea. This is what I'd like to do with it, and then they would they'll kick that back with notes. Yes, we like the idea. Let's see more. So How then, long does that take between? Um, a, a, about about a week. Every oh, okay. they, they meet every uh, the the art is reviewed every Friday. Okay. So I submit it's reviewed Friday. Oftentimes I'll get those notes back on Friday, and then I know what direction to go in because I work I work about six days six to seven days a week right. on 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 this. You know, and I and I have to stress I'm not a Disney cast member. I am working under a special contract where it's called a master artist contract where there's very few of us. There's, I think, less than 20 of us in the world that work under this contract. Wow. Um, it's, it's a very exclusive club. Um, I, don't, I have not purchased the license to do this on my own. This is, they, they sought me out and said, come and we'd like to offer you this contract to create this art. So, and so anyway, so I, I work you know 60 70 hours a week so saturday morning i can hit the ground running with revisions or the next step in that process so the next step in the process would be uh, uh, what they would consider a tighter concept based on the notes yes let's see this larger let's see this smaller let's move forward tighten that sketch up work on that all week long submit that for friday again notes and at that point they get more critical with good it's great proceed to paint no we'd like to see this larger we'd like to change this we don't like the way this hand is placed it, it, again character integrity is everything to the company yeah. the company is built on let's remember this on a mouse it's it's mm-hmm. all about the characters and you can't have 17 different versions of the little and mermaid it's, and it's understandable right. yeah. yeah it's completely understandable um also I mean, think about. Um, I just heard a. I, I just heard about an artist that submitted um, a portrait of characters on a roller coaster uh, in in Space Mountain, and it was M- Mickey and Goofy and Donald on Space Mountain, and they all had their hands up. Well, that got kicked back 
because you can't put your hands up on rides at Disney. They want you holding on to the bars. So <laughs> right. legal gets involved, and it's just it's a wow. wonderful process for all the way around. For me, as an artist, I get critiqued like crazy, and it pushes me to become a better artist. You see, what's funny is that, you know, we, I in particular, uh, complain about the homogenization of merchandise uh, at Disney. Uh, when you go, you, you know, you kind of walk into any store and you're going to find the same stuff. Um, and then you have this part of the merchandise equation, the art section, so to speak, where it's just not. And what I love is every time I walk into the art of Disney, I can almost always find something new. Mm-hmm. And something like, wow, oh my God, I've got to have that. Um, and it's such a, a great variety of artists, a great variety mm-hmm. of styles. Mm-hmm. Uh, you take a look at the work that Dave Avanzino does, for example, versus what you do, and it's completely different. But again, appeals to I me mean, as a fan. Mm-hmm. It appeals to this certain this certain sensibility that I have, and you know, I'm no art uh, art expert by any means. I was saying to you before we uh, went live, I don't know what it is, but I know it when I see it. I know what I like. Um, and I know what I respond to emotionally. Mm-hmm. And those are, that's the stuff I'm drawn to. That's the stuff I'm going to whip out mm-hmm. my wallet for. Um, and I think that Disney has done a tremendous job um, in terms of developing, reaching out to very, very talented artists like mm-hmm. yourself, bringing them in to the mix, mm-hmm. giving them that creative freedom to create these really unique pieces. This hat box ghost is probably my favorite piece I've ever seen a Disney artist do. And I can wow. see it as an wow. iPhone case. Wow. I really can. <laughs> well, I, I see it as merch. Yeah, I, yeah. And, I, and, and in designing the art in the back of my mind, you know, I'm thinking, yeah, I want, I want the original in the galleries. I want, I want reproductions in the galleries, the prints, the jaclets, but I also want merch too. Yeah. I want T-shirts. I want, I want stuff just like we do with the sports stuff. Mm-hmm. I want people wearing Kevin John stuff. I want Kevin John stuff on their on the iPhones. You know, for me, there's a there's a tremendous. If, if you love that piece so much, you want to stick it on everything you own, man. I that geeks me out. <laughs> <No>, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, I agree that you know this, especially a piece like this. Mm-hmm. It really does, really really does translate but it's um to see the uh see one of the originals though mm-hmm. i mean this is an absolutely stunning thank stunning you. piece i mean it literally just stops you in your tracks when you see it thank you um and it's very excited for you, you know thank when we you. first met i say oh you should try and mm-hmm. you know Go, go go do go do a gig with Disney and look what it's turned into. Yeah, it's, what else do you have coming up? Oh, great stuff! Again, you know, because it takes several hundred hours to to create <sighs> one original. I mean, I'm talking once I get the final approval to move to to paint. Um, it's nothing for me. Hatbox Ghost was almost 300 hours. Wow. It's nothing for me to spend two months on a piece. So, um, although I've had my contract for a year and a half now. Um, just now are my things starting to hit the galleries and go into reproduction like figment so here's a couple of great things that and and i'm gonna i'm gonna yeah give you a little inside here um so the haunted mansion 45 45th anniversary of the mansion is coming up on august 9th and all arrows are pointing to hatbox ghost going to reproduction wow limited edition prints for that event as well as for the I've people got, that can't spend the five thousand dollars right the yeah the original is five <laughs> five grand so um one someone very lucky will end up with that but the reproductions will be very affordable. And then um, I have gotten the go-ahead and have started paint on my another Haunted Mansion piece, which is the Gravedigger, um, you know, the care, or the caretaker from the graveyard within the mansion. And it's it's a cool style. It's totally different. It's And it's, it's one of those pieces where, again, I'm painting from the point of view of a huge Haunted Mansion fan that has been dying for mansion merch and different mansion Amen. art for years. Amen. So I'm just trying to deliver stuff that I want to hang on my own darn wall, right. you know? So that... Uh, I've got a deadline of July 1 for that piece. So it looks, again, all arrows are pointing to that going into reproduction for this anniversary. The Figment piece comes out here at the end of the month on the 28th. 
And there is another piece that I cannot talk about other than saying it's going to blow your mind if you're a fan of Halloween, if you're a fan of Liberty Square, if you are a fan of um, the legend of Ichabod Crane and Sleepy <laughs> Hollow. This piece is going to absolutely blow your mind. I'm, I'm, I'll be on the show again before yes, this will. thing. It's, it, I got the green light on it. It's going to blow people's minds. It's something that I've wanted to purchase and hang on my wall for the last 20 years coming to the parks. And, and I'm going to be the one to deliver it to the fans. And I, it geeks me you out. You know, it's funny that you say this because I tell these guys all the time, remember that you're the audience. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, when you're designing something, filming something, shooting something, writing something, remember, you're the audience. Create what you want to read. Create what you want to see. And that's what you're doing as a Disney fan. You're getting a chance to create the things that you want, that, like you said, you would put on your wall. Which, you know, for someone like me who appreciates that stuff, loves that stuff, but couldn't draw a stick figure to save his life, um, you know, that, that, that to me is so, so cool. On Facebook, it's cool to see the process, too, because mm-hmm. you, you, you post those videos of the whole process of it. It's, it's wonderful to see the whole process. Thank I would, you, Corey. I definitely recommend people go. Thank you. And Thank absolutely, you. Like you. absolutely, you need to uh, check out Kevin John on Facebook. He puts a lot of his stuff up yeah. and kind of goes through that process. Mm-hmm. And it's always great stuff going up on your on your Thank Facebook you. page. Thank really, you. really glad you could come in today. Thank you so much. Um, you're always welcome. Thank always, you. Thank always you a so seat much. here for you. Um, so with that, uh, we're going get, to get to our poll question for next week since um, Diagon Alley is imminent and uh, the topic of Universal can sometimes engender some extreme emotions uh, among Disney fans. We thought we'd ask the question, with the addition of Diagon Alley, are you more likely to visit Universal Studios the next time you come to Orlando. Facebook.com slash Diz Unplugged. A little later on today, that poll will go up. And as always, we're going to select one person at random from the people who answer the poll, and that person's going to win a $50 Disney gift card. So head out a little later on and tell us whether or not the opening of Diagon Alley is going to make you more likely that you will head out to Universal Studios. And that is going to do it for me this week. Coming up next, Dustin West is going to talk about the latest rumors swirling around the Disney universe. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you again next time with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Have a good week. Bye.